Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and this is UDM Pro Complete Setup Part 2, where we're going to be talking about device adoption into Unify Network. So you're probably already chomping at the bit to get some of your devices adopted. Let's go ahead and hop right in. Here we are at the dashboard of Unify OS. So the first thing that we want to do is click on Unify Network to launch that application. Now, notice the first thing that you see up here, not seeing everything you need, go to the classic dashboard. So we'll probably be flipping back and forth between the classic dashboard and the new dashboard. The new dashboard doesn't have everything that you need or everything that it should have, I guess, to configure the network the way that I like to configure it. So personally, I like to go back to the classic dashboard but I also don't want to use the classic dashboard as a crutch. If Unify is coming out with a new dashboard, I'd like to try to utilize it as much as possible for the things that we're trying to do. So here's the dashboard of Unify Network. We can see the UDM Pro in the upper right hand corner. We can see utilization, uptime, most active clients. All of this stuff will get more populated as we add more devices and clients to our network. What we want to do first though is click on devices. As you can see right now, I only have two devices showing up in my devices pane. I have the UDM Pro as well as this USW Pro 24 switch. The UDM Pro has an onboard switch, but that switch does not have any power over ethernet. So if you wanna hook up something like a Unify access point, you either have to use a PoE injector and plug it into the UDM Pro switch or you have to plug this into a PoE switch, which is what I'm gonna be doing here. The first thing that I wanna do is adopt my USW Pro 24 PoE switch. So I'm gonna click on that device, and then in the upper right hand corner here, I'm just gonna click adopt. So here we can see that our device has been successfully adopted, but we also see that there is an update available. Let's go ahead and click on the device. Here you can see all of the ports for everything that's plugged into the device, as well as the port speeds. What's 10 full duplex? Ah, that is the connection over to my QNAP NAS. I'm not sure why that's 10 full duplex, but that device is actually off anyways. And we can see this port over here with the little up arrow means that's the uplink port to the UDM Pro. If you come over here and click on topology, we should now see our topology has changed. We have the UDM Pro, we have the USW Pro in between, and then we have a couple of clients out here everything's wired since we don't have any wireless devices yet. All right, let's go back to devices. We can see all sorts of statistics about our switch right here. We can see the uplink, downlinks, clients, statistics, etc. If we click on the device itself, we can give it a more useful name if that's something that we wanna do. I personally like naming switches as the room or location where they are located. And then we have some options for the screen. For instance, if you want the little display screen to turn off at night, you can set that here. And then we can change around our ports, which we're gonna be doing that a little bit more later in the series when we start talking about guest networks and VLANs and that sort of good stuff. For now though, let's just go ahead and update this switch. Updating a switch in Unify typically takes about five minutes or so. It has to run the update and reboot the switch. So I'm gonna run this update and then we're gonna come back once that update is complete. And in my case, it actually says downgrade the USW Pro 24 PoE because I probably had it hooked up to something that had a little bit higher firmware version than we have now. We're gonna go ahead and download it so that we're not seeing that update notification and we're gonna click confirm. Our switch upgrade is complete, or our switch downgrade technically is complete, so we can now see our firmware status on the switch says up to date. Now let's go ahead and adopt an access point. I have this uh, U6 light access point right here. We're gonna plug it into my PoE switch, and I can see that we have power because the LED ring around the Ubiquiti logo is blinking white. Uh, before we get into adopting this device, however, if you guys are interested in a more in-depth look on either the Unify Pro switches or the U6 Lite or even the U6 LR, I've done videos on all of these devices where I dig really in deep. Uh, so yeah, check those out. I will put links down below in the description. Now, Unify is seeing the U6 Lite and I have a solid blue light on this device, which means that it's already been adopted to some other Unify controller, right? So we don't wanna do that. We wanna adopt this to this Unify controller. 
So we're going to have to pull out our handy dandy factory reset tool, this paper clip right here, and I'm going to hold it into the little reset hole on the back of the device for about 10 seconds. Once your device has been factory reset, it will have a solid white ring around the Ubiquiti logo. And in Unify, it has a blue dot next to the device. So let's click on the U6 Lite. We're going to click Adopt in the upper right-hand corner. Okay, there we go. The U6 Lite has been adopted. We can see the firmware status on this one is currently up to date. So we are good to go with this device. Uh, and now the access point itself has a solid blue ring around the Unify logo. All right, so this is great. We now have an access point adopted. We now have a switch adopted as well as the UDM Pro itself. Any other devices that you have uh, for Unify Network are going to be adopted in a very similar fashion. But we can't actually use this device yet because we haven't created any wireless networks and we haven't dialed in our LAN settings. So that's what we're gonna do in our next video when we talk about some of the initial steps after you've adopted some devices into Unify. All right, make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions. Both of those things are completely free, and we will see you in the next video.